In this video, I'm going to show you how I think when I'm designing things in Blender. And I'm also going to show you how you don't really need to know really anything about modeling in order to create cool, advanced designs. Even if you're a complete beginner, even if you're not creative in the brain, I'm going to show you exactly how this process works. Now, if you're brand new to modeling, brand new to Blender, this might be a little bit, you know, out of your league, I'd really recommend grabbing our accelerator course if you want to learn our full hard surface modeling workflow in less than two weeks of time with about 30 to 60 minutes a day of work like over 4,000 students have done at this point. So if you're new to hard surface modeling or just want to learn our full workflow, check out our accelerator program in the link in the top of the description. So if I go into top view here, you're going to notice all these shapes here. They roughly look the same, but each individual shape is being built on piece by piece. I don't have to think creatively. I don't have to have some crazy, you know, creative brain. All I need to do is work from a basic shape and iterate on top of that shape over and over. Now from the top view, we can't really see you know, too much of that, so I'm gonna show you here in 3D view. So let me go ahead and just hide all of these for right now. We'll get to these in a little bit. Just gonna go ahead and hide those. Let's start with something basic and take a look at this. So you're gonna see what I have right here to start is a basic cylinder. That's all I have, just a cylinder, nothing more, nothing less. Then I go over to this one, and then what I did was I simply chamfered the top and bottom edges nothing crazy and then after that i put a hole through it with a boolean after that what i did was literally made a little inset here on the inside and then just extruded it out a little bit that's it very simple you add in a loop cut you extrude it out very simple then we go over to this one what i ended up doing was i simply scaled this area here on the z-axis that ended up creating that and what i might even do here just kind of show you um, kind of how I, I, I was doing that in real time. So for example, from this one to this one, literally I just went in, added in a loop, just kind of, you know, beveled that and then extruded it out. And there we go. We had that shape right there. Nothing crazy. And then to go from this shape to this shape, I literally just went in here and just scaled that just to make a more dynamic element. And then to go from this shape to this shape, you might not really see the difference, but you're going to see I introduced a bevel here on the inside. And again, it's very simple. Every single operation that I'm performing here is a basic operation. I'm not doing anything complex. But when you stack all these simple operations, you end up creating something complex. And that's uh, pretty much how every single designer out there making cool stuff is doing this. And then to go from this one here over to this one, I didn't do anything crazy. All I did was I added in a plane. Let me just move the cursor here. I added in a plane and then I added in a solidification to the plane, made it very tiny. And then I just ran a Boolean and that created that shape right there. Nothing crazy. And then to go from this shape to this shape, I just introduced a Boolean here around these uh, four quadrants. And then to go from this shape here, to this shape, I just ran a slice operation here in the top. And then to go from this shape here to this final shape at the end, I simply scaled that in a little bit. Every single operation that I performed here on each of these elements were literally like two or three clicks at most. Any person can learn these basic operations in literally minutes. This is why I always tell people that they, they, they seem to think it's like a lie or that it's impossible. This is why I tell people you can learn this workflow in a matter of weeks, you know, one to two weeks. We've done it for thousands of students before because these operations are so fundamentally simple. You just need to know how to piece them together. And that's kind of exactly, you know, what I'm doing here on each of these pieces. I'm using very basic operations and those end up stacking to create something you know, more and more visually appealing to the eye. All right, let's go ahead and hide these for right now, these uh, upper ones here. And let's go to a different example. This time I'm just using a basic cube, okay? So we're gonna go in here and just start at the beginning. So again, what I have right here is I just have a basic cube. I scaled the cube and then I beveled the edges on this cube right here, or the scaled cube rather. And then I chamfered the edges and then I cut a hole through the middle 
And then after I cut the hole, I extruded this little inset here on the inside. And then after I did that, I simply scaled that inset down a little bit, just like I did in the cylinders, just a different shape here, right? And then on this one, I simply introduced a bevel. And then after that, after the bevel there, I added a chamfer here on the outside. The order doesn't necessarily matter. It just, you know, you can kind of see what I'm doing. And then after this part, I added in a solidify cut right there to the center. And by the way, guys, this shape, this design element here is called echoing. The reason it's called echoing is because we're basically repeating the same similar shapes over and over and over again. It's a very powerful design principle. You do need to be careful because if you echo elements too much, you're going to end up getting something called sandwiching, which is basically where you've echoed so many elements that you can't really see what's going on anymore. It's just so deep with detail, all right? And you'll develop an eye for that over time, but uh, for right now, this isn't anything crazy. Then I went from this shape here to this one. I just added in a bevel modifier to highlight those edges there, as you can see. Makes it look nicer. And then for this one, I just added in a simple Boolean cut here on the top. And then to go from this shape here to this one, I just added in another little cut there through the middle. And then to go from this shape here over to this shape, I added in a cube. I'll even show you. I just added in a cube here with a slice operation to make this shape here. So very basic stuff. Now, what I kind of noticed here when I went from this shape over to this, I kind of realized, you know, this could be like the lid or the top of, you know, some sort of box, some sort of crate. This is where you're not really having to think creatively. You're kind of getting the idea popping into your head just by the shapes you're making, right? I didn't think of this shape ahead of time, really, but I noticed, you know, this could be some sort of top or, you know, top to a container of some sort. Then I decided, you know, I'll just add in another cube here and then just bevel those edges. And then from, uh, I need to add in a bevel to that one. And then to go from this one to this one, I simply went to the inside and beveled the interior. And then from this one here to this one, I just introduced a little echoed element here on the inside. I just beveled that and then extruded it out. And then to go from this shape here over to this one, I simply scaled that down and beveled it once again. And now you can kind of see like this could be, you know, a game asset. This could be a prop in a video game. And it took me maybe two minutes to make off video. You know, to be fair, I know how to model quickly, right? But it doesn't take you that long to make these things. So you can kind of see like the progressive iteration. I can even go backwards and you can see how if I just go piece by piece and I'm not overthinking the whole process, I can go from very, very basic, you know, simple designs to something way more complex and way more visually appealing and you can see exactly you know how i did that here i'm going to pop up a short recording on the screen here as well this is a very very old design that was made several years back but this is kind of how you know ryu and i are thinking when we're making designs in blender we start with a very simple shape a very simple block out and we build and iterate on top of that piece by piece by piece. The goal is not to think of the final design. That's too scary. That's too difficult. And you'd have to have, you know, some crazy brain to be able to do that. If you go to ArtStation, you know, these people aren't thinking of these designs, you know, from zero to a hundred. They're progressively building on top of it very easily. This is why, you know, you don't want to get overwhelmed when you're modeling. You want to go piece by piece by piece. And I'll just kind of scroll through this one more time. And just by looking at the shape progression here, you can begin to feel how it's less about the modeling and it's more about what you're doing with the tools, the design elements, everything like that. You can see that it doesn't require any sort of crazy creative brain or a ton of time spent learning the tools. It requires basic modeling operations and the you know fundamentals of design and different things like that. And you can see exactly how I'm doing that here in this particular example. So that's it for today's video, guys. I hope this was helpful. I know a lot of you are struggling with design and thinking of shapes in your head. I would encourage you to not think about it. I would encourage you to just make a shape and build on top of that shape so you don't have to really have a creative brain in order to do that. 
Now, if you just want to skip the line and, you know, jumpstart literally everything from, you know, the get go, I'd really recommend grabbing our accelerator course. It's going to teach you our full hard surface modeling workflow, including all of our design principles, how we think when we model, how we render literally the entire workflow A to Z in about two weeks of time with just 30 to 60 minutes a day. We have thousands of student results here. I don't see anybody else in this field, you know, getting results for people like this and we can do this for you as well. So if you're interested in that program, I'll link it in the top of the description or in the pinned comment and you can learn more about that. Hope this video is useful and I'll see you in the next one.